Well, my name's David Williams. I'm a principal research scientist for Agriculture Victoria Research in the Invertebrate Sciences Group. I'm the leader of a national project on introduction of a biocontrol agent for codling moth. The biocontrol agent's called Master's Riddens. We've had this project in two phases, so the first phase was to get the biocontrol agent introduced through quarantine into Australia, prove that it was going to be fairly safe to release and then start to do a pilot release. And then the second phase of the project, which is what we're in now, is getting it released throughout Australia and working out what the constraints might be for it to survive and establish and be useful in, in commercial production. The parasitoid we're using in this project is a little wasp called Mastris ridens. It originated out of Kazakhstan. It was highlighted in some work that was done in California where they introduced it. Did a really good job over there and since then it's been picked up into Argentina, New Zealand and now Australia for release against Colima. To be able to release enough wasps, we have to maintain cultures of those insects. So at Tatura, we're actually rearing the codling moth. So we've got a stock culture of codling moth and we split that into two because Mastris attacks basically the hibernating caterpillars. So we have a stock culture and we have another half which is hibernating caterpillars. So they're kept in the cool room. And then at Bandura we've got our mastress culture. They feed on the caterpillars that we produce at Tatura. So once we get enough caterpillars, we send them to Bandura, they expose them to the wasp and then you get extra generations of the wasp coming out. So what we're doing to release is we're using modified fruit fly monitoring traps. We put the parasitised Colimoth larvae bands into those traps and we hang those traps out in the orchard. So we're putting generally about 10 traps in a small area in the orchard and we allow the mastress to emerge naturally from there and disperse around the orchard. The field releases of mastress are timed generally for autumn because that's when the bulk of the codling moth larvae will be going into hibernation and that's the preferred time for mastrus to get established. First release of mastrus in the field was done at Merrigan near Tatura into an organic orchard because we knew that it had a good population of codling moth there and so it would generate the best chances of survival if mastrus was going to get going. Since then we've done two other orchards in in Victoria, in the Golden Valley. Two orchards in Stanthorpe area in Queensland, several orchards in New South Wales, one in Tasmania and two in South Australia. So every orchard we've released it in, it's crashed the population in those blocks. That creates some problems for us though because the population is so low that it's difficult to then recover masters and we need to be able to demonstrate that it's established. when. In reality, it's probably moved to neighbouring blocks to test the establishment is to put out sentinel bands with codling moth in them, not parasitised. So you hang them out in the orchard and if mastress is there, in theory, they would find those caterpillars and parasitise them. The response by growers who have actually got the mastress has been very positive. Um, one grower in, in Tasmania said he's had the best results he's ever had with his, his coddly moths because it, it just basically wiped them out. What I'd found when I went back to check for the mastress was that the grower had less than 1% coddly moth damage. With coddly moth, there's a number of different stages of its life cycle where you can get to it, but there's some where you can't. The overwintering caterpillar is difficult to get to because it's under the bark. Mastress will attack that, so that's a good spot. Growers in Australia certainly have used mating disruption to try and reduce their codling moth population, but if the population is too high, mating disruption, although it delays the mating, it doesn't give a good enough control on its own against high populations. But if you reduce the overwintering population of codling moths by masters feeding on them, then you can get to the stage where the population is low enough for mating disruption to have a good effect. The use of masters fits in really nicely in integrated pest and disease management, and growers need to just be aware of 
will impact some of the pesticides they might want to use for other things may have on the masters. That's the critical bit. To help growers make decisions about their pesticide usage, we've actually done lab trials on the impact of common pesticides on masters. So the first test we did had a look at direct toxicity. So if masters is exposed to chemical residues, will it kill it outright? And there are a number of insecticides that obviously will do that but there are some that have no effect at all, so they're, they're quite useful to use if mattress is active. There's also fungicides, obviously, that we have to take into account. It's well known that some fungicides may have side effects on beneficial insects, so we've tested a range of those as well. Most of the chemicals that we've tested so far in terms of fungicides and miticides have been safe against the adults with direct toxicity, but there are some that have had secondary effects so they might reduce their fertility or they might actually affect the next generation of the masters. At the moment now with the masters is trying to show that it's established but we're also at the stage where we need to get commercial suppliers of biocontrol agents interested in taking it on.